Hi, I'm Melissa from designsbylittlebee.com and this tutorial is going to show you how to make all five projects from the Designs by Little Bee Groovy Embroidery Kit, which is an eyelet fob, a groovy snap tab, an ID or badge holder, a pocket band, and a mini composition book holder. So without further ado, let's get to the projects. For the peace sign eyelet fob, you'll need a cut of vinyl two and a half inches by two and a half inches for the front, your backing that's provided in your kit, and the split ring and eyelet that were provided with your kit. The first step for making an eyelet fob is to hoop your stabilizer and then stitch the placement stitch for the fob. Next, you're going to take the piece of vinyl that you're going to use for the front of the fob and tape or pin or adhesive spray it down to secure it to the stabilizer and then run the detail stitch, which for this eyelet fob is a peace sign. Now you're going to remove your hoop and flip it over. We're going to place your piece of backing fabric to cover all of those stitches so that we can run a final stitch which sandwiches them together and it gives this nice finished look. I like to grab the tape that I used on the front and reuse it to tape this piece down. You can use pins. If you do that, please remember to pin from the front so that you don't have any sharp pointies back here near your machine bed. The final step for your key fob will stitch this outline stitch, which will sandwich all these together. And I will give you one piece of advice, and that is before you remove it from your hoop, I know that you're really excited to see the finished project, but definitely remove your hoop and check the bottom first to make sure that that vinyl back there did not shift or fold over or anything like that and make sure it's a nice, good, finished product. Do a little quality check before you remove it from the hoop. This is what your key fob looks like after removing it from the hoop and trimming around it from the front and the back. Now all that's left for you to do is punch a hole and install an eyelet. I use a crocodile to install my eyelets, so I use the 3 16 punch on this side to punch my hole. Then I take my eyelet, insert it in, and use the smasher piece, because we're very technical around here, to smash the eyelet. And there's your finished product. For the groovy love snap tab, you'll need a cut of vinyl from your kit, two inches by five and a half inches, the backing piece that came the, of the same size that came with your kit, the snap set, and a key ring. The first step for the snap tab is to hoop a piece of stabilizer. I use a Durky Easy Frame, so I just clip a piece on mine, but it's the same as hooping. And then you stitch out the first step, which is a placement stitch for your whole key fob. You're going to stitch all the detail steps for the key fob before we put our backing on. And I want to note at this point that you can skip any step that you don't care for. For example, if I were stitching on this uh, really cool pattern vinyl like I'm doing right now without trying to show you the product, I probably would have skipped the fill stitch inside the letters and just done the outline. I really wanted to show you as a sample what it looks like when it's done completely. But when you have an embroidery design like this and you're using a different kind of material, you can choose which elements of the project you want to stitch. If you want to skip the outline, if you want to skip the fill, if you want to skip that that outline that I did right there at the end, you can do that, it's your choice. And then when you decide what you wanna stitch and stitch it, then you'll wanna stitch the circle, um, the little circles for the snap placement if desired. Remove your hoop from your machine, flip it over, and you're going to take the backing, which I'm using uh, blackboard fabric from Joanne, and you're gonna to wanna to tape or if you're using frames and it's long enough, you can clip to the edges, or you could pin this to cover all of the stitches from the front. The tip I wanna give you here is if you're using pins, be sure to pin it from the front so that you don't have sharp pokies near your machine bed. Stitch the final step, which will seal both of these pieces together. And a word of advice, before you remove your project from your hoop, I know you're really excited to cut it out and install the snaps, but 
before you remove your project from the hoop, it is a great idea to look at the back and make sure that the back looks nice and clean and that your machine picked up the entire backing because trust me, it's no fun to get through a whole project and take it out of the hoop and then realize there was a fold or you didn't cover the whole project or your fabric shifted or something like that. So always check the front and the back and do a quick quality check and then you can remove it from your hoop and move on. After you remove your project from the hoop and trim around it, this is what it will look like from the front and from the back. You can use your snap placement circles to poke holes with your awl, that's A-W-L, and install your snaps using your hand press or table press according to the manufacturer's instructions. For the mini composition book holder, you need to trim a piece of your groovy vinyl to the size uh, specified in the PDF instructions. You'll also need these two pieces of pink vinyl for the pockets. And if you're going to use the lime green applique, you can find your little green applique pieces. And find the piece of yellow cording, the elastic cording that came with your kit. Your first step is to hoop a piece of stabilizer and stitch out the placement for your book, as I've done here. If you're going to use the fold-over elastic closure, what you're going to do is now stitch the placement for that fold-over elastic. Then you're going to take your fold-over elastic, fold it in half with the right sides together. You're going to take the raw ends, place them maybe a quarter of an inch or a third of an inch over that placement line to where it's centered. You're going to tape it down or pin it, making sure you're out of the stitch path, and then you're going to run the tack down for that elastic. If you're going to use the piece of elastic cording to close your notebook, then you can skip these two steps. Next, take your piece of vinyl and cover all the placement stitches so far with the piece of vinyl that you measured out for your book. You can clip to the edges if you're using a frame like this. You can pin it, make sure, making sure that you're outside of the stitch path. You could even tape it at the corners or the edges. Next, you're going to stitch out the design according to the step list that came with the design. For this one, it's the hippie van, and I've already selected the colors I'm going to use, and so I'm gonna stitch out all those steps now. As a note, this van design includes a placement and tack down for both the top and bottom portions of the van. I only utilize the bottom as applique. That's the lime green portion. If you're going to use a piece of elastic cording to wrap around your notebook when it's closed, which is what I usually do, then you need to stitch the little placement circle for your elastic cording now. Also, if you added anything to personalize the notebook, stitch that before moving on. Finally, remove your hoop and flip it over. Take your two long pieces of fabric that are meant for the back of the book and you're going to line them up with a straight long edge up to the tick marks that were in the placement of your book. Do you see those? That shows you where to line up your pockets. Since I use frames, I usually clip the edges. You can pin them. If you pin, make sure to stay out of the stitch path and make sure to pin from the front so that you don't have sharp, pointy edges by your machine bed. Now in the original design, this is what the inside of the notebook looks like. You can see that you do see that raw part in the middle. If you do not want to see that and you want a more finished look, I suggest placing a piece of vinyl just big enough to cover the inside square right here and not the size of the entire book. This is because that means that your machine only has to stitch through three layers at these small sections right here instead of the whole book. And when you fold your, your notebook cover to cover that book, it does make it a little stiff to have three full layers of vinyl. So if you do want to cover this kind of ugly backing, I suggest taking a piece of vinyl that's five and a half tall by four and a half wide. You can see I measured it just now. And before this final step, you can insert it right here under the pockets to cover like this and then run the final step. And that way you'll just have a little cover for just that ugly part. I never do that when I'm making something for myself because I'm never gonna see the inside of it anyway. 
but I have made things for fundraisers and things for like maybe a very special occasion. When I have put in a piece of that blackboard fabric I get from Joanne or maybe a piece of Oli Fun or something that's thin but sturdy and doesn't fray, and I'll put it right here in the middle just to cover up that back section. Here is a picture of a project that I made where I did insert a small piece of vinyl to cover that back stitching. This is what your finished notebook will look like coming out of your hoop. So if you use the piece of fold over elastic, it will be hanging off like this. If you used the placement circle for your elastic cording, it will be in the center like that. If you did use fold over elastic, when you're cutting around your project, which you are about to do, be sure to pull up this side and cut and then pull your elastic away and cut behind it, okay? Be sure not to slice through your elastic just like that or your elastic will be gone. Now, I don't use elastic for mine. I almost always use the cording, so I don't have that. But you're going to cut around your project right now just like a square, just like it goes, maybe giving yourself just an eighth or a quarter inch seam allowance along the outside and being very, very sure to watch your fold over elastic right there if you've used that. If you used fold over elastic, it will be sticking out one end like this. So all you want to do is close your book and pull it inside out and around your book like so and it will close like that. It will be attached on the edge. If you are using elastic cording, you need to grab a very sharp poker, like I use my awl, AWL, which is what we use to install snaps. I poke a hole inside my placement circle, and then I use the tip of a mechanical pencil or something like that, and I fold over my elastic cording in half, poke the folded part through, I pull it about as far as I want it to be taut. Then I open it, make a note of that point with my fingers, and I tie two knots right here. That's the part, that's the spot at which I think it'll be good to fold over. And then you insert your notebook into the cover, close it, and voila! For the ID or badge holder, you'll need to trim a piece of your vinyl to the specifications from your PDF instructions. You need the backing piece that came with your kit and also this little piece of plastic vinyl for the pocket so you can put your ID or badge or paper of your choice. The first step in making your ID or badge holder is to hoop stabilizer and run the placement step. The next step is to take your piece of vinyl for your ID or badge holder and secure it to the stabilizer to cover the placement stitches. I like to use pins at the corners. And you're going to look at the step list for your hippie van and select which colors you'd like to use to stitch out your van. I need to mention in this step that the van for this file does include steps to do applique. Let me see if I can show you. It includes applique to do this top part behind the windows and also the bottom part. But when I'm, I'm stitching this out for this sample, I'm only using the bottom applique. I'm not using the top because I want this cool psychedelic looking print to show up behind the van or in within the top of the van. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to use an applique for that piece right there. I'm just going to not use it. So you'll see those steps for the applique, but just like with any other embroidery project, you don't have to do them. I'm going through the detail for my hippie van design and I just wanted to clarify what I said in the last step. I did stitch the placement for these two applique pieces, but I'm not going to use an applique for this part. I'm going to skip the tack down for that one and I'm just gonna tack down the applique uh, lime green pieces I'm using for these, this part right here and then I'll do a satin stitch here to give it that finished look, but I'm not using an applique piece for this part. Now that your applique work is done, remove your hoop and flip it over. You're gonna take your piece of backing, which is blackboard fabric from Joanne for this project, and you're going to cover all of the placement, all of the stitches, I just dropped it. <laughs> you're gonna cover all of the stitches so far with this backing. And I'm going to use pins for this step, 
but I'm going to first flip my hoop over and pin it from the front so that I don't have little sharp pokies on the bottom near my machine bed. Just to show you before I return my hoop to my machine, I have pinned my backing from the front. That's why you only see these little pieces right there. It is pinned from the front. So I'm going to return my hoop to my machine and stitch the next step. This step is actually optional. It is a buttonhole stitch. This is to be used if you're going to slice open your ID or badge holder to put, for example, one of those plastic snap lanyards in there. If you're not going to use that, you can just skip that step and you can insert an eyelet or you can just punch a hole and use it that way. So that step is optional, but I stitched the buttonhole this time so I can show you how to slice it and insert a lanyard. Next, you want to remove any pins that you had around your project and stitch these guide steps, which will help show you where to put your vinyl on the back, and then remove your hoop and flip it over. Now, for these guide steps for your vinyl, it doesn't matter what color you stitch them in or if it looks clean on the back side because you're going to cut those out of your project, so it doesn't matter what color you used or if it's neat or not. You're going to take your vinyl and pull it up to those top straight tick marks, okay? And make sure that it goes down at least to the bottom of this line. Do you see that? It's kind of hard to see with clear vinyl, but mine's going well past that line. So I'm going to tape this part. This part, this, uh, personally, this part I do like to tape because it's only got to be on your machine for like 30 seconds to stitch out. So I don't bother with pins, I just tape it. And also it does not matter that it doesn't cover this guide because it's that is actually stitched outside of your design. So it doesn't matter for this particular project if it covers these sidelines. So don't worry about that. It just needs to line up to the tick marks with your straight edge. And then it needs to go all the way down to at least the bottom of those guides. This is hard to do one handed. <laughs> then return your hoop to your machine. Now you've stitched the final outline. I did mine in lime. And word to the wise, I know you're excited about removing your project from the hoop and trimming around it and seeing your completed project, but do remove your hoop and flip it over, or I'm gonna show you what the bottom of my frame looks like. Make sure that that final stitch caught all of the layers and your tape or pins didn't come loose your vinyl didn't shift or fold. This is just a really quick quality control check that will save you a lot of hassle in the event that you have to remove it and fix something before you take it out of your machine and you don't have that option. Here is your completed project after taking out of the hoop and trimming from the front and from the back. You see you've got your little vinyl window pocket to put an ID or badge or uh, just a piece of paper with your name or whatever information you want on it. Since I stitched the buttonhole, I used my craft knife to slice right through it. And if I have a, one of those badges that has the little plastic snap thing, you can stick it right through there. If you did not use that buttonhole, you see there's plenty of room for you to put an eyelet if you just wanna hang it from elastic or a piece of leather. And that's your finished project. For the pocket band design, you're going to need the piece of yellow vinyl that came with your kit. It's three and a half inches by seven inches. That's for the five by seven design, which is actually about four inches by six inches. If you're making this the four by four design, all you need to do is cut off three inches off the bottom. That'll be the perfect size. You'll also need the piece of backing for the back of it that also came with your kit. Same instructions apply for the size and your piece of elastic if you're going to use it as a book band. The first step for your pocket band is to hoop a piece of stabilizer and stitch the placement stitches. Next, grab the solid vinyl for your pocket band and cover those placement stitches and pin or tape as you see fit to secure. Next, stitch the details for the design. Next, 
stitch out the pocket placement line, which will show you where to put your pocket. Grab your piece of pocket fabric and line a straight edge right up to where those tick marks were on your pocket placement. Line it right up under those tick marks and pin or tape to secure. Next, run this top and bottom stitch. I did mine in yellow. Next, remove your hoop and flip it over. Take your backing piece and cover all of the stitches so far and tape or pin to secure for the last step. If you do pin, be sure to pin from the front so that you don't have sharp pointies by your machine bed. Return your hoop to your machine and run the final step, which will sandwich all these layers together. Machine work is now complete, but a word to the wise, I know you're excited to take your project off of your machine and cut around it and see the finished work, but be sure to flip over and do a quick quality control check before you take it off the machine, because if something happened and your bottom piece came unpinned or untaped, or maybe it folded over, you definitely want to catch that before you take it off your machine and you can't go back and rerun any steps. If you're going to use this pocket band as just a, a pocket keeper to like throw into your purse or your handbag with something in it, you can just trim around it and use as is. Here's what it looks like from the front and the back. I've already got my elastic in it. If you're going to use it to wrap around a book, then here's what you need to do. You need to get your fold over elastic and the length of fold over elastic you're going to need is the height of the book that you're using times two minus one inch. So this mini composition book is four and a half inches tall, times two, that's nine inches tall, minus one inch is eight inches. Now you need to thread the elastic through the band, the book band. So what I like to do is use my bodkin, which is this awesome tool that you use to get I always use it for hoodies, like drawstrings and pants or hoodies when they come out in the wash and you cannot get them back through. You stick this handy thing called a bodkin into where the loop is. You hook it through on this end and then you just pull. Well, it's stuck in the stabilizer. <laughs> Nothing can ever be easy, can it? So you pull it all the way through, then unhook it, and then I'm going to turn it so that the pretty shiny side is facing me. There we go. And then you're going to take these back pieces and you need to secure them together. Now, it doesn't matter if the way that you do this is messy. I've used super glue before. I have hand stitched just a quick few stitches in there. After you secure it, you're going to pull it back through so that this ugly piece is inside that between the stabilizer and the back piece. So you'll never see the way that you secured it. So feel free to just be messy with it. Tape it, uh, not tape it. Um, I've even used a stapler before. <laughs> Um, giving myself away there. But anyway, that is it. When you secure that, you can then wrap it around the book of your choice and it'll go like this. I hope you enjoyed making these embroidery designs. You can find these and more at www.designsbylittlebee.com.